Welcome, welcome players to Discovery Freelancer. I am Zentor, economy dev lead and local coding meddler. Upon uh, popular suggestion, I've decided to begin a video devlog series showcasing some of the ideas uh, in their maturation process, I guess you could say, to shed some light on at least some of my plans and hopes for the direction of the mod in the areas that I influence. So of late, a lot of my work has been POB focused as I think that they have a ton of a uh, ton of potential and they're currently very sad in the way that they're implemented on the server. I believe that they can be uh, vehicles of commerce and RP and overall I'm wanting to make the server economy more player driven. And uh, I think the POBs can really facilitate some of this. So in an ideal world, players of different faction types can produce materials needed by other groups in their own manufacturing processes and production cycles, and it could lead to greater interaction and cooperation rather than the current system of incentivizing players to just silently AFK trade. So for instance, I think that mining factions could harvest ore in their local fields and rather than mindlessly haul these materials seven or eight systems away to dump them at a random NPC station. They could instead take them to their local POB that's one or two systems away and refine them into existing metal commodities like gold ore, gold ore becoming gold, um, the metal that's currently in the game, for resell to other groups, other player groups who need it for their own manufacturing processes. And these metal commodities, um, doesn't always have to be metals, but in the case of gold, they would still be available on other NPC bases, but they would be more expensive than what we would expect them to be produced from a POB. So with that in mind, I think that the first step to creating this kind of system would be allowing players the ability to have separate buy and sell prices on their bases in order to facilitate this, this cyclical nature of the overall economy so so today we're going to look at the buy and sell coding features and see how they operate and how the player interacts with them on an NPC base so let's go ahead and go find an NPC base all right so now we're on Long Island station a copy of it at least on my test server and we're going to go take a look at the shop. So as you can see, this is what the shop normally looks like. However, at the end of each row, there is an additional field, which is the selling field, which wasn't there prior. And it shows it up here in the explainer area as well. So if you look at the values, you have the item quantity, the buy price, that's the price that the base buys it for. The minimum stock, which is the minimum amount that has to be on hand for it to display in the shop if you're not an admin. The maximum stock, which is the maximum stock that the base will purchase. And then the sell price, which is going to be the price that the base sells it for. So when this change goes live on the server, we've already set it up so that the sell price automatically takes whatever the buy price is set to. That way we don't have any weird funny business where players are just losing money or it freaks out because there's a zero value or something like that. And then the base owner can log into this normal shop menu and go ahead and change the values, which I've already done down below on number four in robotic hardware. And all you would do is just do it like a normal shop pricing change, except you do shop price and then the uh, uh, the index number and you would set it to the buy price the minimum and maximum values so I'm just going to replicate what's already there and then we go ahead and change this just for fun which is the selling price what the base sells it to players for and you'll see it updates there so now if we go to the shop and we take a look what's going on there you'll see Let's go ahead and find it in the list. Nomad, Nomad, Robotic Hardware. All right, so you can see Robotic Hardware on both sides. And it's kind of confusing because they both show the same amount. So let's go ahead and sell this to the base. 
And so what we find out is when we go to sell it, the transaction has stopped and you see the numbers are now different. They are now the price that the base actually buys that item for. So it even gives you a message in the display telling you that the price you're seeing is wrong and that it's switching the values. It stops the transaction and it changes it for you. And so now when we sell it to the base, we actually get the correct 750 credits from the base itself. And you see now that the number is switched back to what the base sells to players for. So what we did is we made an auto detection state that looks to see what the player is currently trying to do and if the values that they're seeing is not representative of the action that they're doing it automatically switches it so there's no funny business of losing credits or causing issues with the uh, dealer itself and if we take a look at the base help menu go to the second page we also have it all updated in the ex the uh, explainer showing you how all that stuff works and if you look further down the page there's even a new command slash price command and the reason why this is here is because before we came up with the auto detection the auto state detection system we initially were looking at just manually having players switch between buy and sell of course that's kind of confusing especially for newer players but we thought even after we set up the state detection system that this would be a nice thing to have for players who know what's actually going on and what this does is it switches both sides of the dealer menu to either all the buy prices or all the sell prices. So you can take a look at a glance of all of the values at once. So if we do that now, you'll see that the prices for robotic hardware have updated. And if we switch it back, once again have changed. Robotic hardware is the only one that's actually changing in this case because none of the other ones have had a sell price configured in the shop menu. But it's kind of a nice at a glance situation so you can see all of the values all at once. So what this is going to do, uh, first of all, is going to give a lot more functionality to OR storage bases. So right now there's only there's two, two methods of operating your OR storage. You either keep your static price all the time so that when miners come in selling their ores to the base, the base purchases it for a set amount, say 2,000 credits, and then haulers come to the base and buy it from the base at the same value at 2,000 credits. So no money is gained by the base or the base operator, even though they're maintaining the base and supplying it and putting it in a strategic location and whatnot, making all the connections. So in this way, you're going to now be able to turn a little bit of a profit. The other situation right now is even more finicky where you deny uh, purchases or deny sales so that the base only purchases while it's bringing in ore from the fields and then you have to manually switch to a new price value and only set it to selling. But of course that's always very frustrating to people that don't know what's going on with your base schedule and they happen upon your base and it shows that there's material there but they can't purchase it. So that's always kind of silly. So in this way ore storage is going to get a, good, a big boost and this uh, buy and sell works for all items on the base. So equipment, code names, generic commodities, whatever you put on the base, you can set a buy and a separate sell price. So you can use this for RP, you can use it for your base business, you can even uh, set generic commodities at separate buy and sell prices if you notice that your base is maybe along the route of artifacts or any other commodity. You can have that ability to now set multiple prices and have your little micro business going on and of course this is going to let us plug into that larger uh, player driven economy that we're talking about so that separate prices prices can be set and manipulated later on down the road when we start adding multiple modules and some of those other modules have also already been written like the ore refineries and we'll go into more of that in a subsequent video but that's going to be all for this one and as always, this is Zentor, and I'll see you in the next one.